Ladies and gents, welcome back to the Media's End. This is Marcia and Touch Paradox and last bit oops. Last episode we suffered our way through the Celestial Alpheus and we got to intersection 2. The Cerulean Glimmer something like that, I think. I'm not entirely sure. I think that's what it was called. Yeah. In any case, um I have not gone back to the Alpheus. Because no, <laughs> we'll, we'll do so at some other point. But I'm gonna explore this area for today. I'm gonna try and make this a shorter one because uh, I don't have that much time, unfortunately. Yeah, cerulean, cerulean glimmer. Not much time, unfortunately. So we're gonna have to be just doing this for today, and then hope that we can manage something, maybe. But yeah. Um. My god, that episode, oh, that lost area was just a nightmare. Holy shit. Like, genuinely talk about a difficulty curve. Literally, the definition of diffi the difficulty curve, what that area was, honestly. So, but we're done with it. I will have to go back and try and find the gift as well, which I am not looking forward to. Oh, hello. You, my little chest buddy. Do be looking rather suspicious. I guess not. Good. All right. Cool. Yeah, I brought this new bow with me. See how that works out. Plus, it's got power too, too. So, hopefully, that should be of help. Oh, forgot to mute Discord. Sorry. That was hundred percent my bad. A lot of cooked fish. All right. Let's see what else do we have in here. What biome does give off this particle? Oh, it's the warp forest. Right, right, right. So this shit like flies a lot faster. Which it definitely does. For sure. Which is great. Oh yeah, by the way. Uh, the Lost Key Saga is over. Because uh, someone found it. Uh, actually, that's the main reason why I wasn't able to record earlier today. Uh, some runner, I think, found it and uh, posted it into like a Lost and Found Facebook group. And uh, I've also made a post in there saying that I've lost my keychain. And if anyone happens to find it, then uh, any information on said matter would be much appreciated. And then, like, two hours later, someone's like, Oh, yo, I found it. And I was like, What? was that sound? And can we talk about what that was? Was it you doing that? Dude, stop it. I don't know what you're doing, but quit it. Quit your shenanigans, dude. It's uncool as hell. But yeah, someone found it. They literally just left it like near a bathhouse, public um, swimming pool thingamajig on the island. So I woke up early in the morning. Oh! <gasps> Jesus, <laughs> I woke up early in the morning and I went to go and pick it up. And thankfully it was literally just there where uh, she sent me like a picture on on, on the Facebook group. It's like, yo, if it, it's right there. If you want to go ahead and pick it up. And lo and behold, it, it was there, thankfully. So yeah. But I got a little bit of time off of the day because of that. To be fair, I also went around as a little extra... I did go around and uh, do some more Pokemon Go while I was there. It's ridiculous because um, there's like a lot. Oh, there's a chest down there. There is a Ponita nest in on that island, meaning that a lot more Ponitas spawn on there. And it is extremely easy to do an excellent uh, throw on those. So basically, I was just farming XP at that point, pretty much. Sharpness, loyalty, tempest. It gives extra speed. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I gotta say, I really like this intersection. How it looks. In general. That was pretty underwhelming. To be honest. We do have a lot of fish now. So I guess there's that, but... Uh, that doesn't do us much good now, does it? I don't know if fish is better than 
uh, bread. I don't think it is, but uh, but yeah. So what else is in here? Cause like surely we gotta find another gift in here at some point. Uh, you would think. What was that? There, I saw some weird like blocks around me. Probably those air blocks. And this probably seems like we need to head down if we want to get to the actual quote unquote dungeon bit of this area. I assume. Okay, more blocks. Cool. We'll take him. Um, also, I hope you guys enjoyed that little intro bit. Um, to be fair, very much inspired by uh, Sporkle. He also had that one of those in his own series. And I was like, you know what? I want to try doing that. That looks like fun. So, oh my god, this thing is massive. I mean, hi. I'm honestly not surprised about this. In all honesty. I'm kind of concerned about where that creeper came from. Oh, there. Yeah, can I get rid of this guy before he does some funky nonsense? Which, as we established about a gajillion times, funky things are not allowed in here. And I gotta say, I'm glad that we started picking up some chain mail because everything hurts like an actual truck in here, man. It's ridiculous. But yeah, so hope you guys like that little intro bit. I'm gonna keep doing that from now on. It's real fun. So yeah. I mean, I wanted to spruce things up a bit. Um, as far as the editing goes, I've got like uh, a bunch of because I've I've learned how to green screen now properly. I've got a bunch of green screen uh, meme templates and stuff like that. So we're gonna be doing more of that as well. Uh, ooh. That's, I think that's actually better than this. And I don't have another malevolence item, so we can just have this on. Can you like die, my dude? Thank you. So that's pretty neat. I think it's better anyway. No, it's definitely not better. I, I can't, I think that was a bit slower than the other one. In all honesty, did we just, wow, we just one shot that guy in the face. God damn. Okay, I'm kind of spooked at these guys because they, again, creepers anyways, but. I'm like, I can never tell if they're going to have some funky nonsense going on with them. So yeah, oh, there's iron there. No, it's gold, never mind. <laughs> I thought that was iron. Silly me. All we need now is just a really decent sword. I'm not saying that the replate blade is not decent because it is, especially when it gives you the little haste effect when you kill something. But at the same time, dude, this bow is ridiculous. Yeah, quit that shenanigans, dude. No one cares. Okay. Stop it. <laughs> Get some help. But yeah. Some really nice sword would be great. Yeah, I think this pick is actually better. I mean, it's got mending on it, plus it's got uh, a lot of other cool things. Uh, uh, yeah, we're getting full up on shit. Um, yeah, that, that works. I suppose. So there's like a little building looking thing here. Let's go investigate this. I mean, that thing right there. Okay, that was not really how I wanted to handle that. Dude, this bow is ridiculously good. Holy crap. Okay, cease. Do a little bit of that. And a little bit of this. Yeah, this not only is the... Oh god, where am I go going, dude? Not good. Yeah, this jump boost effect of the, of the, the offhand item. It just makes everything so much more easier to navigate. I can see why people were saying that it's probably the best offhand item. And I can see that 100% because it is ridiculously good. Okay, 
Okay, we are running out of inventory space. Very quickly. Uh, I'm, I'm just give me a millisecond. I'm gonna do some inventory management. Be right back. Let us carry on forward. <clears throat> This bow is very, very good, man. I'm actually kind of glad that now that I went around the that area and that I found this. Because this makes my life a lot easier. Plus, there's no chance of me killing myself with it. Like with the chromatic and bow. Because that shit's just a recipe for disaster, as we've seen before hey yeah all good all right let's head inside <laughs> poor dog was just stuck in the room I don't know why he's got into the room come on got that shit out there this is awfully quiet in here if I gotta be honest I'm not a big fan of that. Not one bit. I really gotta say, I really love how this area looks. Usually I'm not a massive fan of the... Of the white variant. What is, what is this called? Yeah, diorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually I don't like diorite that much because I don't think it looks that good, but... Combined with everything else around this area, it actually works really nicely in my opinion. So... Yoink, 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 yoink. There you go. Cease, my boy. Uh, there's another guy around there somewhere. Okay, you guys need to piss off. Yeah, Doggo, you need to calm down. Lunch is not ready yet. Especially not for you, because you later. So, stop nudging around. Okay, let's see what that chest is inside of it. Oh, there's a lot of people down there. So in other news, um, I've talked about in an earlier episode about that one specific game, uh, Dungeon Siege, right? Now, your boys finally got into work. It took me like a solid two and a half hours of messing and fucking around with the... With the, whatchamacallit, with the config files and just, uh, just other things in general. And it was not an easy thing to do. Having to read up like, I don't know how many tutorials and Steam pages and that kind of stuff. But uh, it works. And I've got that mod working for it too. I don't know if I talked about it in that one specific episode. But there was a mod made for it that basically combines the first game, that's DLC. The second game, and then that DLC, into one game. So then we can basically play the entire game's story from start to finish in the same campaign from the beginning with the same character. So I've started playing that. And I can't tell if the reason why I'm having so much trouble with that game is because they changed like a lot of things with how enemies work and enemy placements and that kind of stuff. Cause shit's really hard. And I do not remember it being that difficult in all honesty. So maybe they changed it because of the mod. Cause um, 2 does have like a skill system basic which one didn't have to I don't know just put more flavor into the game I suppose yeah do you need to stop doing that and I feel like the frostbite effect applies to them when you break the spawner that is really good okay armor still holding up nice there's a way we can go down but there's a chest we haven't checked yet so yeah I've been playing a bunch of dungeon siege on my own uh, off time and it's really fun really good nostalgia honestly and another old game okay we got some loot that's a good axe well at least it looks like a good axe right so what's this note we've journeyed far now to find as many essences as we can the fabled cerulean glimmer lies after the alpheus instead of deep within the frozen lands of the north sure there must be more essences here how many have the other scribes found I don't know man, it doesn't seem like they found many because I'm the one picking all of them up. So I don't know what the scribe's been doing, but uh, 
Doesn't seem like they've been doing that much, to be honest. Now. Oh, fuck this. Oh, also, broken letters. We've talked about this a myriad of times. So yeah, so I've been playing Dungeon Siege, and I've been also playing another kind of an old game called uh, Puzzle Quest, which basically is like your, you know, classic uh, Mesh 3 kind of game. But instead of it being just a normal game like Bejeweled or whatever it's called, um, it's like an RPG, basically. You've got like classes and you've got like spells to do, and if you match different colored um, things on the board, then... Uh, Ooh, that was risky, but we got it regardless. If you match different colored things on the board, then it you get different mana for it, and you can use that to cast spells which do things on the board. It's really cool. And I also found a mod for that, which I wasn't even aware that it existed. That it was a DLC for that game long, long ago. Ooh. Ho, 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 ho. Is it, is it X time, boys? I think it is X time. But yeah, I wasn't aware that there was a mod for that. Come on, sh are you shitting me? We have to go from the outer bit? Come on now. Uncool. I just want to go grab this thing. Come on. There you go. Yep. And that's the pink gift. Alright, short episode. Exactly what I was looking for, because the lunch is happening soon. I think it actually may be a bit too short, in all honesty, but any case do I wanna yeah sure why not and then just do something like this and then there good but yeah there was a mod for that that or a DLC for that which I don't think came out for PC because I only played that game on my PSP back in the day and uh, I'm like just blown away by it it's like whole new classes and shit it's really cool it's really neat so yeah so I've also been playing that but mostly just I don't know I have like a knack for um old PC games for some reason now is weird let me just get these and also I don't think we checked that chest beforehand also do we even need gold what do we need gold for I'm kinda kinda confuzzled right now yeah we have checked that chest too let me just quickly get this and then we'll go back home actually before we go back I forgot to have a look see up here I haven't checked all the way up here what we have going on in this area okay found the second for the first part of this the lord of frost placed everything they had on wager wager with the god of time he claimed he could freeze time itself his claim to end foul when he failed but his failure save gave birth to his finest creation the cerulean glimmer yoink okay so do we have anything of note here maybe Welcome to the Surian Glimmer, the masterpiece of the Lord of the Frost. I am an echo of what once was before the words fall. Before the words fall. I can pull materials out of remnants of the Glimmer for a price of worldly possessions. Materials. Be safe, traveler. New pots have awakened in the quaint cavern, all of which and familiar. Cool. So you're a merchant boy. Oh, he's, oh, okay, we can get iron now. That's very good. Iron nuggets, which is a bit of a concern, but I mean, I suppose suppose we could technically speaking farm out um, some stuff from this intersection looks very cool by the way with the ice in here and I realized that you yes I could have gone nice and uh, picked up a boat and just slid around the, on the boat but uh, what you're gonna do about it you're gonna run and jump around do you reckon there's a chest in the middle of that flame thing there Like right there. I I think there might be. You know, every intersection has to have like a proper loot hidden in like the quote unquote middle of it. So So yeah, we already passed one area. Um probably should read what there is. Oracle's Rift by Paradox. That's area seven. So six was probably that one that we just walked past like a moron. And then this should be area eight, right? No, this is six. This is the next one. Twisted Shores by Ty. So then that was eight that we walked past. I swear to God, dog, you need to stop moving about so much. Honestly. 
Okay. So I'm gonna quickly check this. If there's anything in here by chance. And then after that, I'll go back, put down the gift, and then call it there. So yeah. Lo and behold, there was a chest here. Soulfire Saber. Saber. That's pretty good, to be fair. It's got no fancy enchantments, just a straight up good sword. Still think we're gonna stick with the replay blade just because of the haste effect. Right, let's actually I haven't read this either. Sharpness, efficiency, and breaking. Fuels champion souls with the power of the cerulean flame. Even the bitter cold has an aspect of eerie warmth to it. When burning while holding this axe, the user is immediately extinguished and becomes enraged for 15 seconds. After the effect ends, the user takes 3 damage. And then you get more attack damage and attack speed. That seems like a very risky mechanic, honestly. And then you're supposed to use this, probably. In the offhand. So then what the strat would be, I assume, is replace this, and then do something like this, and then... And now we're, now we're powered up. Based off of the effects that we see around us. Yeah. And you take that much damage. That's kind of neat. I kind of like that. Again, I t it's the fact that I don't want to switch out the, the jump boost because it's just so goddamn convenient. But it's an axe, so we need to give it our shot. So I'll try it out for sure. But uh, that's nothing not going to be today. Because let me go back, give the gift downstairs, and then we will be done for uh, today. Let's see, yoink, thank you, okay, uh, here, 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 it's got a very nice pink looking thing, uh, should be it, yeah, yeah, pink gift, yoink, right, what do we have here, what the fuck is this? The widest claymore, sharpness 5, sweeping edge, unbreaking X, second wind, evasion. A sword to honor the widest lord, the hilt has a flushed face on it, Lord Kiwiti could surely do some real damage with this weapon. And second wind has been discovered. With evasion if you take a fatal hit from a mob, evasion automatically triggers. You are then granted a volatile shield of 8 health for 8 seconds. If you lose that shielding, it detonates hurting you. If you kill a mob, the shielding is diffused and you heal equal to the shielding's total. Repeated triggers in a succession of second wind make the shielding less effective and more dangerous. Dude, that sounds... Kinda good? That's an insane sword, by the way. Honestly? Okay, we'll have to investigate how this would work, because that seems really good. Plus, it's just... Look, look at how massive this is. Plus he's got that extremely cursed smiley on the f on the side of the hilt. Yeah, look at that. What the hell? That's weird. <laughs> I kind of like it, but still that is very, very uncanny and disturbing. But in any case, um, hope you guys have enjoyed. Next episode, we'll probably start heading into the first area in section 2. And I might do some off-camera exploration back in the... Whatchamacallit place, the Alpheus. I also have forgotten to mention that I did get the other gift from the Oasis. It was near the the teleporter bit. You could see like the gloss and the obsidian stick out from the side of the wall. I'll, I might include that as a clip as well where I was just so you guys can see. Yeah, other than that, uh, do take care and I'll catch you all next time. Bye!